Welcome to Next Level Greatness, the podcast. Around here, we'll be talking about all things expansion, going from good to great and from great to greatness. I'm your host, Barbie Collab. Get ready for your next level. Let's do this. Welcome to Next Level Greatness, the podcast. Today, we are talking about going out with the old and coming in with the new. How to let go of limiting beliefs that aren't serving you so that you can become your highest, most empowered self. With this topic, we are diving deep into identity. A lot of times when we have limiting beliefs, for example, let's start talking about money. If I grow too much, I know that I'm going to lose it all. Or I have to overwork to feel responsible and that I'm worthy. Or this was something that I absolutely dealt with. I'm afraid to grow my business because I'll get sick again. So in any of those examples, there is an actual benefit to holding that belief. If I grow too much, I'll lose it all. And I have to overwork to feel that I'm worthy or to feel that I'm a responsible person or if I grow my business, I know that I'm going to get sick again. What is your limiting belief that you are holding on for yourself? And what is the benefit? I can tell you that for myself, I'm afraid to grow my business because I'll get sick again. I had that belief for years and it kept me safe. It kept me safe like a ship in a harbor. And we know that ships are not meant to be in a harbor. We're not meant to stay safe. Or let's say that you had a parent, a mother or father, who built a business, neglected his family, or the mom neglected her family. And then this is why you have the limiting belief. I'll just spend whatever I make, just like my dad. That also keeps you safe. That also keeps you from making your own mistakes. It keeps you nice and comfy in this unpleasant reality. And I know that it sounds so wild and crazy, that our subconscious mind would rather stay safe in the harbor and say, you know what, I'm just not going to try to build a business because I'm going to be just like my dad or I'm just going to be just like my mom or if I build the business, I'm going to get sick. But the role of the subconscious mind is to keep us safe. It doesn't want us to grow. One of the exercises that I have for you then is to take an honest look and say, what is your limiting belief? whether it's around money or something else, and how is it serving you? Because it's serving you in your life some way, somehow. And you might want to journal on this. You might want to take a piece of paper. You can burn it afterwards. But holding this belief is doing something for you. And for me, I was missing out on the joy and the pleasure that I've had the past two years of building my podcast, building my online course offerings, and the joy of rebuilding or growing my network marketing business, I was freaking paralyzed from the fear that I would get sick. So the next step is to ask yourself, what are the costs of having your limiting belief? And I actually want you to write them down because the costs are heavy. I was dying inside, not literally, but spiritually. I really felt like I was losing or I had lost a part of myself by being the same person, doing the same thing. My life was beginning to feel like Groundhog's Day because I was too afraid to let go of my limiting belief. What is the cost for you? of holding on to the belief that we're going to be just like your parents or you're going to be just like your mom or you can't actually make money or that you can't look beautiful because then you're going to get unwanted attention or that I don't know what your limiting belief is, but I can tell you that I've heard many, many of them and they all run the gamut and none of them are silly. They're not silly. These limiting beliefs usually come from 
the subconscious programming that we had as children from parents, our society, grandparents, that they didn't mean harm. I mean, maybe some parents did, but they really didn't mean harm. They were just passed on from generation to generation. So this was interesting just the other day. I was in my magnetic portal group. One of the women was, we were talking about makeup. And one of the women was saying that her grandmother said to her when she was little, can't you see that even corpses at the funeral home have makeup? A woman should always have makeup. Well, of course, this woman always believed that that's what women should do. And she loves it. She loves being made up. But then someone that actually knew the woman in the group said, oh, well, that's funny because my uncle, I think it was an uncle, said she saw her with a bunch of makeup on and she said, look at you. You are just so beautiful without makeup. You don't need it. Two very opposing views. Who's right? No one's right. I mean, at the end of the day, you get to do whatever it is that you want. But so many of us, we have constructed this identity about ourselves that doesn't really fit who we are. It doesn't really fit our beliefs. What is it that we desire to do with our lives? And so what if the woman who doesn't wear any makeup because her uncle said, you're beautiful without makeup, what if she actually desires to wear makeup? And it's a simple one. But what if the woman who feels like she has to wear makeup feels enslaved by it? And I'm not talking about the people in my group. I'm talking about hypothetical. Here's the great news. So once you've looked at how limiting beliefs are serving you, they're benefiting you, and how they're costing you, the great news is that you can change by constructing a new identity for yourself. You can actually change who you want to be, how you want to be, how you carry yourself on in this world. The future of your success, write this down. It is so important if you're not writing it down. It's okay if you're walking. But the future of your success is based predominantly on the image that you hold of yourself. So if you're always saying things like, I can't hold on to money, then guess what? You can't hold on to money. You're never going to be able to hold on to money if that's the way that you see yourself. If you're always saying things like, I'm always sick, guess what? you're always going to be someone that is sick. Or if you say, I'm, I'm just a teacher, I'm not really an entrepreneur, then guess what? You're gonna have a really hard time starting a business because you don't see yourself as an entrepreneur. All of this has to do with identity. I want to introduce this concept of the logical levels of change model. And this is taken from neuro-linguistic programming. I love it so much because... At the very top is identity. This is how we can really bring about change. So there's identity. Below that are beliefs and values that we hold about ourselves. What is it that we believe? What is it that we value? Below that is capability. What are we capable of? Below that is behavior. How are we behaving in the world? And below that is the environment. So what does our environment look like? Who are we hanging around with? Let's say you want to lose weight. And I always choose the lose weight factor because it just seems like an easy one. And so you clean out your refrigerator and you're going to change your behavior and you're going to start going to the gym. But if you see yourself, now we're talking about identity, as someone who is lazy, as someone who will always be overweight, as someone who... It's just not good with this kind of stuff. You are going to have a really tough time making lasting change. Let's take the same example with business. You start an online business. Let's say you become a body coach and you get yourself a planner and you start doing the behaviors that you're supposed to do and start talking to people and you say, okay, I'm capable and you have your affirmations. But if you haven't done the identity work and you haven't really taken a look at who you want to be in this world and you haven't changed it and you've always been told that you're not good at business, you're good at mathematics or you're good at talking to people, but you're not a business person, it's going to be really tough. So if we want to change, if you want to change, we have to change our self-image. We have to change our identity. Who do you want to be? 
So I'm going to give you a little exercise on working on your present identity. So this is taking a look at yourself, an honest look at yourself now and ask yourself, who are you? Who are you now? How are you being in this world? What kind of qualities do you possess right now? You may or may not like what you see, but you may. You may actually say, wow, you know what? I'm a really good wife. I'm a really good mother. I'm a good husband. I'm a kind person. How do you behave with yourself? What are your relationships like? And if we're talking about money, what is your relationship to money and finances? So you're looking at your present identity. It's who you are right now in the world. And here's the thing. If you want to change, if you want to become someone that can hold a bigger vision, if you want to be, do, have the great things in life, you have to step into a new version a higher version of yourself. You don't have to become someone else. No, you get to keep yourself. You get to be who you are. But it's just an elevated, more empowered version of yourself. So here are some questions for you to consider. And you are welcome to first do a higher self meditation. I'm going to link it in the show notes. I do have a higher self meditation from a previous episode. I will link it in the show notes. So if you want to go ahead and do that meditation before you answer these questions, but go ahead and finish listening to this episode, it's who do you want to be? What qualities do you want to possess? And who do you want to be with yourself? I knew that I wanted to be with myself, someone that is loving. I wanted to be able to see myself. And that's what actually happened in 2022. I finally was able to see myself. I saw that other people saw that I was successful. They said I was kind. I was amazing. I was all these things, but I wasn't able to see it myself. What kind of person do you want to be with your spouse? What kind of person do you want to be with your partner? What kind of person do you want to be with your children or with other people? And because we're talking about money, what kind of relationship would you like to have with money and finances? And this might be such an eye opener. I've given you a lot. This is a short episode, but it's been chock full of content. So the next step is embodiment. Once you have your your answers, you actually get to try things on for size and act as if. What if? What would it look like if you acted as someone who handles their finances like a freaking boss? who is trusting and knows that money is going to come their way, what would that look like? How would you act if you were the kind of spouse partner that is loving and patient and passionate? This is a fun life experiment that you get to do. So that is all for now. I'm telling you, change boils down to identity. I would recommend listening to this episode probably multiple times, doing the work. This is like a mini training for you, but I believe it will be so fruitful. The year is young and you have an entire year of becoming, an entire lifetime of becoming. Once again, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I will see you next week and you are always welcome to join my magnetic portal community. Have a beautiful day. If you loved this episode and if you're loving my podcast, I would love for you to leave a review. They really do make a difference in spreading the word and having more people be impacted. Also, I'd love for you to join me in my Facebook community called The Magnetic Portal. You can find the link in the show notes. I'll see you next time.